Mick Lynch, who's General Secretary, as if you need reminding of the RMT union, who joins me now. Mr Lynch, we've just heard of a, a sort of dual model, really, using the expertise of the private sector. I wonder how you might respond to that. Morning, Mr Lynch. Morning. Well, we haven't had any expertise from the private sector. They've been living on subsidies since 1993 and 96, when it was fully privatised. And there's not one train operating company that could stand on its own. Most people imagine that privatisation is a company, a private company, putting capital at risk and therefore uh, returning profit, and which might be argued as fair enough. They don't do any of that. They live on subsidy and they rake in what they're raking in now is a royalty, essentially. So they get a percentage of all the revenue. They take no risk whatsoever. And whenever they've been asked to take risk, Great Western, First Group, they've handed the keys back. So we've got four of the English companies uh, under government control at the moment. We've seen the disaster of Avanti on the West Coast, where everybody's condemned their, their abilities and their ineptitude. And we've got Wales has got uh, public ownership now under the Welsh Government, and Scotland has got two railway companies that have had to be taken back in. So we've got seven companies that have failed in the private sector, and they've all had to be taken back into public ownership. But we've still got this fragmentation because of the way the rules are set up under the Tory government. And what we're going to do now, hopefully, if Labour get elected, is take a step forward so that we can have a fully integrated railway where the railway is reunified, the fragmentation is, is got rid of, the private sector but is taken out of the equation with the profit, £10 billion of profit they've taken out since privatisation, and we can get back to a railway that's running in the interest of the people and, of course, in the interest of our economy, and the climate, so that we've got an integrated transport policy that's a holistic policy rather than one that's just centred on uh, corporate uh, greed, frankly. And the cost can be set aside because I, my understanding is the Labour plan, they will wait. They're not going to try and buy these licences. They will wait until renewal and then take them back in. Is that a fair characterisation, Mr Lynch? Yeah, they don't need to. So all these contracts have got end uh, dates and they've all got break clauses in them where the review of their performance can mean that the government can take them in. So the, the rolling programme will, will happen quite quickly as soon as the government get into power uh, and they've got a means by which they can do that already. But then they want to bring in some legislation that's going to give us a new railway. And we say that, see that as a step forward. What they haven't tackled, which is a shortfall, is the role of the rolling stock leasing companies who are raking in billions of pounds uh, on these contracts, which are similar to the PFIs that have been discredited the rest of the public sector. They've left freight okay. out of the equation, and we think we could do with a, a national freight company. And we've still, we will still have some right. private sector operators such as Eurostar and uh, Lumo. So there's work to be done. We welcome that, but we think it will be in the, in the interest of the passenger and the taxpayer. Uh, and to the staff, we hopefully will get a better industrial relations ah. landscape going forward. Well, that was my uh, final question, uh, Mr Lynch, because you certainly won't remind, need reminding, and many of my listeners won't, that there has been protracted industrial disputes of, re of late. Do you think today's announcement makes the possibility of industrial action much less likely with a Labour government? Well, that's what we'd like to see. So what we've got at the moment is an assault on people's terms and conditions. Our pensions were under threat, our... Our rostering agreements, our holiday pay, our sick pay and all the rest of it. We want to put that to bed and, and make that a, a footnote of history and get on with running a railway. And our members want to go to work and provide a service for the public with a bit of pride in what they're doing. And there's been a bit of a shame amongst the railway staff about the way the railway works, and it's not their fault. There's an army of lawyers and accountants swarming all over the railway about delay attribution, about track access charges. Every time a, ra a train leaves a station... There's a transaction between that train operating company and Network Rail to pay for it. We can get rid of all that nonsense, all that bureaucracy, and get a railway that's run according to the needs of the public and the needs of what our economy wants to do and what our people want to do.